Hello everyone, welcome to our weekly look ahead at the markets. And we've had a big week uh, just gone past. Uh, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 75 basis points and they didn't pivot. Though all that pivot language that we talked about, uh, that, that the market had been chattering about, we were very skeptical about here, of course. That didn't emerge as 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 I'd anticipated. It was it was very much a sense that we're going to slow the pace of rates, rate hikes, but we're not going to uh, stop anytime soon. Uh, Jerome Powell giving a pretty hawkish press conference, and the markets fell uh, on the back of that. They had actually rallied a bit on the statement because the statement had shown um, that they might start uh, start start slowing down, but it's it's uh, slowing, not stopping. Um, Bank of England also raised rates by 75 basis points, the biggest hike in 30 years. But in contrast to the Fed, the Bank of England saying that its terminal rate uh, is being mispriced by the market to the upside. So they're, they're saying the market is pricing in too many hikes. Jay Powell uh, had very explicitly said that he thinks the terminal rate is going to move higher uh, than uh, than they had thought. And we did see some pricing, uh, repricing in the bond markets as a result. So the uh, the, the net from the Bank of England was very much downbeat. It was uh, worst recession on, on, on record, inflation uh, peaking at 11% in this quarter, uh, and a very slow protracted recovery, uh, a painful recovery at that. So uh, not much good news for the pound, uh, which sank uh, to around 111.50 uh, on, on the Bank of England statement. Um, and it uh, had been trading about 116 and a half uh, ahead of that. But we've seen some better uh, movements in stocks, uh, certainly the UK market, uh, which posted a pretty good week, uh, led really by basic resources uh, 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 shares, which have been rallying off the back of this rumour mill about China reopening. Uh, and that, that has underpinned strength in Asian equities and into Europe, of course, with the supply chains. Uh, interconnected and so on. So that, that was the story in, in Europe, but in the US uh, a bit softer with the, the NASDAQ uh, coming under a lot of pressure with that, A, the Fed hiking rates and the more hawkish Fed, and also those tech earnings from the week before, which really uh, sent shivers down the spines of many investors in those tech names. And I think that basically um, now uh, some of these tech names are being used to fund uh, 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 investments elsewhere. So, you know, you're seeing if, if you do see markets move lower, you get margin calls, people are selling down the least, uh, the least favorite names. Those include things like Meta right now. So they're funding out of these stocks into uh, other more cyclical parts of the market. So Dow better than the NASDAQ is the story that we're working to at the moment. This week though, US midterms, uh, that is uh, traditionally a, a, a trigger for a bit of a rally. Uh, in 17 of the last 19 midterms since 1946, the six months after have done a lot better than the six months before. That wouldn't be too hard this time around. Um, we do think that once you remove the uncertainty of the elections, the market can move higher. Um, red wave conditions might be uh, might be there. Uh, we're not sure if the Republicans could gain control both uh, houses. Um, either way, though, the markets do tend to move up. But if you do get that red wave, you could see uh, a bit more impetus uh, to the market. We've also got US uh, inflation numbers out, the CPI report. The last time we saw core CPI plus uh, 0.6 on the month, and that was up to 6.6 uh, year over year, highest in 40 years. That acceleration in the core inflation is really uh, what's spooking the Fed and so it hiked by another 75 basis points um, last week. So those are the key events that we're looking out for. We've also got UK GDP numbers, so we'll see just how bad it is uh, at the end of the week. And there's earnings of plenty still coming from Wall Street um, and in Europe as well. So busy week ahead and we'll keep you posted right here. Thanks for watching.